Hey everyone, and welcome to what will be my recounting of the experiences I had during my time in the Kingdom Hearts modding community. For many people this may be out of left field, especially if you have subscribed for my other YouTube content. I didn't share too much about my modding adventures on YouTube, except for a couple of trailers and announcements that were used primarily to share either on Twitter or Discord. First, I want to clarify that I am so appreciative of the past few years, regardless of all the negativity I faced. Through the many Kingdom Hearts related projects I've worked on, I've gotten to meet some of my closest friends. I've shared so many fond memories with them, and they've also supported me through really difficult times in my life. A common question to ask yourself is, would you go back and change anything in your life? In my opinion, I stand by not wanting things to be different, because changing anything could have prevented me from forming bonds with my friends or creating memories that I cherish now. I've gone through some awful things in my life, unrelated to my time in the Kingdom Hearts community, and while this video isn't focusing on these experiences, they do lead to some biases that I hold. This video is centered on pivotal events that have transpired throughout my time crafting tools and creating new ways to enjoy the Kingdom Hearts series. But why is the content of this video relevant or important to you? I feel like it's important to share my story so that others who have had similar experiences do not feel alone, because I've seen so many fellow modders and creators get piled upon by those wanting to protect and or inflate their egos. I've grappled for a very long time on whether I want to publish this video or just move on and remove myself from the community. While all of the events we will discuss later on were happening, I do not want to speak from a place of pure emotion or uncollected thoughts. I wanted to analyze the situations I've been subjected to and try to be as fair as I could. I also wanted to frame this in a way that was not limited to the Kingdom Hearts community, as it is clear from my own personal separate experiences that these issues are likely to happen in other communities as well. For that reason, to the best of my abilities, I will not be revealing any personal identifying information. I want to draw attention to the actions, not the individuals. After reviewing and analyzing their language and behavior, I realize that this is likely more widespread across the gaming community as a whole. Honestly, I expect some of them to bring attention to themselves, and choose to make it about themselves. If they do self-identify and start harassing me for calling attention to their actions, then they are clearly missing the point of this entire video. I am not pardoning or condoning these people for any of their actions, but I do not find that creating a video centering around them as people benefits anyone. All in all, it stems from what I believe is a systemic problem in gaming communities that I've been a part of at least. This problem is entitlement. My online experience is fairly limited to gaming communities, so while I am aware that this sort of behavior is widespread, I can only speak to my experiences. I do not want to step out of the bounds of this and make a case that I do not have supporting evidence for. Before we get started, this video is not sponsored, but I did want to take a moment to dissuade some initial critiques that this video may garner. I want to reiterate that I would be highlighting the behavior of specific individuals, not by name, but I understand that those people are upset by this and try to make this about themselves, because this has literally happened before, but I'll mention that later. These are my evaluations of how I experienced their actions. I'm not saying that any of their behaviors were entirely malicious, but these are my interpretations of their words and actions that were directed at me. I will also be discussing several actions from people that I have cleared the air with, so this is not an attack on them as individuals, but rather showcasing the actions and behaviors directed towards me. Also, some people may be upset that I am monetizing this, and claim that I am only trying to profit and that I am not being genuine in my discussion of my experiences. However, YouTube's algorithm benefits from monetization, which means that monetizing my video will raise the likelihood that this will reach others who have experienced similar adverse encounters. In addition, all of my projects were completely free to use, only garnering support through Patreon for a couple months at an at-will agreement, and I did not require any kind of profit directly to experience my projects. This video has taken a large amount of time just on processing and reflecting alone, and I feel like I would be doing myself a disservice if I made it harder to spread by removing ads for something like sharing my thoughts on my own experiences that I've gone through. I simply want to call attention to this kind of behavior, make it clear I'm not in support of this, and free myself of the mental and emotional strain that this has caused me. I want to be able to play Kingdom Hearts games and enjoy the music again without having to re-experience painful situations replaying in my mind. I also understand people may be upset that I'm bringing up trauma that is already over for the majority of the individuals involved. Again, I am focusing on the actions, and the people associated with these actions will not be identified by me. Also, I did not take the opportunity to hastily respond to or engage in the damaging claims and statements they made or spread about me on social media at the time. I will be going into this later, but I was terminated from my previous job in relation to my presence online. I was not in the mental or emotional state to dwell on something like my presence online while I was trying to find and get acclimated to a new position in my professional career. 
Some of the events I'm going to be discussing had a major impact on my life, and I just want to share my story so that others feel empowered to stand up to people that are entitled to their work, that bully them, or that try to damage their reputation. My story doesn't start with Kingdom Hearts, but for the sake of scope, I'm going to begin the story with the first application I developed for Kingdom Hearts, which was the Union Cross Metal Viewer. For those unaware, Kingdom Hearts had a mobile game that is now no longer playable called Union Cross. My first real introduction to the depth of the series was when I started watching someone I am honored to call a friend now, Demo279. I was following his updates on Kingdom Hearts Union Cross regularly, and one day caught on streaming a platinum run for Kingdom Hearts 2. While in chat, I remember mentioning that I could help develop a simple application to use as a presentation of all the metals to show their different guilt multipliers on a graph. This evolved into having a UI for showing stats, the ability to add different buffs, and show ability and supernova information. It was an amazing project as my first interaction as a software developer in the Kingdom Hearts community space. However, this also led to my first negative interaction in the community. Data mining is a common practice in most communities, and this one was no different. There were a couple members in the Union Cross community that were data mining and providing these assets to the community, which mainly consisted of displaying the metal art prior to release. Since my application focused on displaying these metals, I thought it would be beneficial to use the assets straight from the game so that I wouldn't need to rely on other mediums for hosting the images. Although I did end up using KHWiki, which already hosted all the images and information used to power that Unity application I created. I researched into the decryption method that was documented online and created a C-sharp application that copied this behavior, which allowed me to obtain resources up to a certain point. The company that handled the game altered their encryption method when they realized people had decrypted these assets. As I was investigating how to continue pulling these assets, I was in communication with some people that were part of the data mining endeavor. This group was very secretive and protective of the processes and methods used to decrypt the game's assets, which in their defense is fair to protect your work as well as not allow Square Enix to become aware of your efforts. Although it came to a point where they proceeded to mislead me and, and implied the method I was using was an avenue they had already tried and failed with. After some time, they allowed me into their group and began to inform me that I had been on the right path with the method I was using, but that they had misled me because they wanted any data mined information to be sourced from their group. Knowingly misleading someone is not only an issue in terms of morality, but it's also really insensitive of one's time and energy. I was working full time and so any free time I had would either go into researching this approach or building the metal viewer. They wasted my time because they didn't want me to gain knowledge that they already had. But my intentions were never to share this information, other than using the decrypted game assets in my application when they released, not being a new source of leaks and information for the community. I remember having conversations that almost felt like interrogations at times, where they would falsely insinuate and accuse me of sharing information. At the time, I didn't really think anything of this. There were moments where I would receive random DMs from these group members wherein I would be questioned in regards to information spread by other community members. These group members would act as if I had been the one that shared this information, regardless of verifying that I had not. Another situation with the same group was in regards to an automatic image stitcher that I created for the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross maps. The assets in this game for maps were split into tiles, and I created an automatic way to define the boundaries and assemble the map. This was again created in collaboration with Demo. One plan Demo and I had was to use the image stitcher as a tool to help create an application that allowed you to explore the maps on a website, much like what is done with Pokemon or Legend of Zelda tile maps. I believe Demo was also initially assembling these maps by hand so that he could show certain events in the game but zoomed out so that you could see all the characters in real time. I created this tool to help speed this process up for him. One of the members from the data mining group started messaging me privately once they became aware of my actions. They started questioning my motives and accusing me of causing them emotional stress, which was a manipulation tactic to pressure me into withholding this application from Demo. They quickly became more and more aggressive in their request for me to stop helping. I found out later that Demo had actually been requested in the Kingdom Hearts Union cross maps from this group for some time, but it wasn't until I started speeding the process up with my auto image stitcher that this person intervened. No one owns Square Enix assets, except for Square Enix. The fact that I was treated with this level of harassment shows the entitlement this group had to property they did not own. Their actions indicated that they intended to gain acclaim and status from the information they had, but would hoard these assets until someone else would begin releasing it. I can only imagine how many others have encountered this gatekeeping behavior. 
Intimidation, interrogation, and deceit were once tactics I would not have used to describe the behavior this group employed to protect their stand in the community. However, in retrospect, this is now exactly how I perceive these situations. From my point of view, it was an act of manipulation and control that was unhealthy in maintaining their standing in the community and detrimental to me, and likely any others hoping to develop their data mining skills and networks within the community. After several unannounced projects, I moved on to something else that was really exciting for me, since I got to work with my fiance, Preferred Whale 6, and again, Demo 279. I ended up working with several more people on this project who were very eager to produce amazing content with our discoveries. This project ended up becoming ReChart, which was a tool I had worked hard on developing. This was definitely one of the most intense projects that I've worked on. It had me tackling reverse engineering large portions of the game, to understanding how the processes and functions worked, and then compiling this knowledge into an application that became ReChart. It's nowhere close to being perfect, but it does allow for creating custom map songs, adding any video to memory dives, and customizing things like world icons, text, and more. These discoveries also led to multiplayer with friends, turning off timings, and more with the Melody of Memory Final Mix mod I created. The negative aspect of this project began when one member of our group started posting my findings and not correcting people when they were given credit for my discoveries. I don't want to discredit any person's work and effort that was put into our collective understanding of the game, but hours of time and energy spent reverse engineering were being misattributed to someone else because of these actions. This went on for a while until it publicly became the other person's discoveries, not my own. I finally confronted them about this, and we were able to come to an understanding thankfully. But during this time, the hours and hours of time I had spent collecting and documenting information was being attributed to someone else, and this was very demoralizing. And this wasn't because I wanted the credit, but rather I didn't want someone else taking credit for work that was performed by me, or someone else. After the situation, there were people that would defame the project online due to the project not being in a complete state, regardless of the project being very clear about the alpha and beta states. This was a brand new game and I was solely responsible for making these tools publicly available to anyone that wanted to use them. It was really difficult to stay positive during this period since all of my free time was given to this project and I was having to deal with the en entitled view that the software should just work, regardless of whether or not I was still decompiling and building it. I understand that losing progress on a chart that was being worked on or the game crashing when trying to load the chart is disheartening. But the lack of understanding and how many hundreds of hours that went into this project to arrive at this point is also very disheartening. I very much understand losing time due to a Visual Studio crash or corrupted backups. It was just these two-faced interactions between these people that really stung. They would say how excited about the tool they were, but then slander the project publicly when it would not work properly, knowing full well it was still in the early stages of development. Sometime after this, there was an individual that wanted to create a tool that assisted in automating certain steps of the process for getting songs into Melody of Memory. I answered questions they asked and published a video that compiled all the information I had at the time surrounding Melody of Memory decryption. I was credited for the help and resources I provided, but the name of this person's project had vulgar language associated with it, and I requested the name to be changed if it were to be associated with my name. There were two reasons for this. One. I didn't want my name in the community to be associated with the name of the project as it was highly inappropriate. And two, I had recently started a new position in my professional career as a software developer, and I was warned that my online presence was being monitored at this time. My online reputation could obviously be damaged, but more importantly, there could be serious repercussions for my family. When I approached the project owner about altering the project's name, this individual was very aggressive towards me. Their only solution to the problem would be to remove my name from being credited in their project, essentially stealing the research I provided to them originally in good faith. They then proceeded to start spreading misinformation about me, saying that I was threatening them and demanding change. I had a reasonable, fair change request to change the name or request that my research be removed from the project. It was extremely clear that they felt entitled to my work and refused to speak amicably about how it was being used. My work and research is my own, and I should not have to argue with someone if I don't want it attached to something vulgar without my permission. I understand that for this person, their project was intended to be fun and had no malicious intent. However, actions in the online space can carry real-world consequences. Moving on to the topic of the Kingdom Hearts 3 randomizer, I worked on this in conjunction with another developer, Critic Perfect. 
I remember the first night we chatted, because Critic was actually looking for assets from Melody of Memory for a different Kingdom Hearts 3 mod. That night we created the first randomized seed after I think only a couple short hours, switching items from chests and level up rewards. This initially was such an amazing product to work on. It was exciting reverse engineering the Unreal Engine 4 files, pulling them apart to modify them, and then stitching them back together and seeing the changes in game. It was fascinating figuring out unknown aspects of Kingdom Hearts 3 that we could harness to push the boundaries of what was thought to be possible in this game. But we let the project get out of our control, and this is where the main cause of stress and anxiety stemmed from. We had many excited members of the Kingdom Hearts community who wanted to contribute to our progress, people I had not worked with before or even people I knew well enough to call friends. In this state, they one created an organized and quote unquote official Discord server and Twitch channel without our consent, two appointed their own staff members to these outlets, and three controlled the flow of data to myself and Critic Perfect. At the time, these three actions did not seem like much, but when looking back, these actions were an insertion of themselves into the project to take some form of ownership over the project. I remember working for my previous job 16 days straight, through weekends, Christmas, and New Year's. Over this period, Critic and I felt really pressured to release the Kingdom Hearts 3 randomizer as well. And so we released a beta with 13 seeds, and were met with people requesting more seeds, stable patches, and complaints about the project. We were really excited with the interest and initial reactions, but it quickly soured as demand for more and quote unquote fixed seeds became prevalent. While some may deem this fair of the community to ask for, we had made it clear that the beta was intended to collect bug report data on the initial seeds. They just wanted more seeds though, but did not understand that code changes were required, otherwise they would have the same experience with the incomplete seeds. Initially, I had arranged for all bug reports to come through our GitHub so that we could handle them publicly, and this way other individuals could lend a hand in resolving issues. GitHub is an online system that allows anyone to connect with the project, view the source code, and report issues that can be updated and tracked with code commits or comments. Not only does this provide a more seamless way of updating and keeping track of tickets from a developer standpoint, but this also gives the visibility of open tickets to users as well as the ability for other developers to see the progress on these issues and submit their own fixes for them. There is really no downside to this approach and it benefits me daily in my professional position. What was decided by the prior mentioned group was that a Discord channel would be more accessible for the individuals using the randomizer. This turned into a Google form after this channel was filled instead with lots of conversation and mostly repetitive non-descriptive reports. GitHub allows login with Google accounts, so accessibility wasn't an issue here. This was simply another action by this group to assert ownership over the project. There was also a common theme from this group. Describing bugs and quote unquote easy fixes for these bugs, then stating that they had no programming experience or understanding of how the randomizer worked, critiquing the code and structure of the project, then stating that they don't understand the flow or know much about the language or engine classifying the project as not open source because there were no comments, even though this is not a requirement from any open source project. It ended up feeling like the words being spoken to us were complaints layered in an excuse that they couldn't help on the project even if they tried because Critic and I did not hold their hand or equip them with the tools that they needed. It was not mine nor Critic's job to tutor others on how to design, program, or understand the code. This group would then spread misinformation on these matters to their audiences without proper understanding or authority on the subjects, and then use it as fact moving forward with their arguments against Critic and myself. After this, Critic and I continued working until we released a final build before we went on a scheduled hiatus for a month, after working for more than hundreds of hours on the project over the past few months. Instead of resting during this period, I was met with DMs requesting things to be fixed, mentions in the Discord about how it was a shame that Critic Perfect and I were taking breaks with the state the randomizer was in, and many more things that made it clear the entitlement this group felt towards our project, our time, and our lives. The people making these comments later revealed to me that most of them were upset that I had left them out of the group of people I had curated to test the randomizer. I had recruited people that I had worked with previously, that I had good standing with already, and that held a range of casual to challenge run experience in Kingdom Hearts games. I received messages from this group saying we should be handing over the testing of the randomizer to speedrunners and challenge runners instead of the people I chose, even though I included those types of people in my group. I simply wanted to curate the randomizer to many different forms of playing the game. This clearly showcased the entitlement this group had for handling the project, since I did meet their criteria but we simply had not included them. 
Critic and I are justified in who we want testing our product, and we have every right to decide who gets to perform this. Two of my closest friends, JK and Spaghetti, would be available whenever I requested help from them, most of the time off stream and in the early hours of the morning. They were a massive reason the randomizer is as stable as it is today. But the individuals from this group wanted to assert their ownership over the project and be part of the randomizer test group. We were also berated and accused of not testing our randomizer enough. Critic and I spent many hours reviewing and testing the functionality we were putting into the game. However, we also had to allocate time to actually research the game files to understand them, as well as then implement this into the logic of the randomizer. To say we did not test this at all was a blatant lie. I had well over 50 files on my hard drive of different seeds that I had meticulously gone through and made sure that they were compiling correctly and loading into the game. There were just so many different scenarios and combinations of running through the game in so many different ways that Critic and I were just weren't able to handle all of the different cases that could happen. So, as a compromise, we had a beta period where we would have these people report bugs and give feedback. But many people in this group were unhappy with the state of the randomizer, even during this beta period, and made it exceedingly clear with their attitude towards us. They publicly streamed themselves saying that I needed to be removed from the project, that they did not like me nor how I handled my previous projects, and that they didn't want to hear why the randomizer was broken, but that they just wanted to be able to, quote, beat the goddamn rando, end quote, even after being explicitly told this was a testing period. The disdain they showed matched that of what some would show a AAA developed title and staff, not two individuals giving up their free time to invest into a passion project. It was really frustrating and heartbreaking. It was clear that they were not wanting to help or understand the work that was going into this project, but rather just wanted a stable release they could use for their own gain. During this hiatus as well, there were actions taken by this group that aimed to undermine and remove Critic Perfect and myself from the project by copying our work with plans to host their own version separate to ours. This endeavor was complete with personalized workflow and bug tracking separate to the ones already in place, and future plans with no intention of rolling these changes back into the source, which is the intention when contributing to an open source project. This group then promoted the version that they had tried to remove us from, rather than being patient and waiting for us to have some rest. This was really devastating to both Critic and myself. The entitlement was very self-evident with how our work was treated, as well as when they brought up their plans to showcase this at GDQ when I spoke with them privately surrounding all these matters. It was obvious to me that the mantra that was being paraded around that they just wanted the best for the randomizer was actually to obscure their own self-interest and gain. I attempted to let off some steam and call attention to this behavior via Twitter, which was, and still is, not a platform to have a productive discussion on. Even though I hid this group's personal information, they called attention to themselves, received heated comments from other people, and then blamed me for sending my followers after them. Their argument was that I had a bigger following, so even though I didn't specifically identify them, I was still responsible for them getting attacked. This was not the case, as I did not share their personal information. They identified themselves. I was simply frustrated with certain behavior that I was being subjected to that I tried to highlight. I was basing my frustration on footage from a Twitch stream I had been lurking in where I was being defamed, but instead opted to use publicly available messages from Discord that did not exactly highlight the behavior I was trying to address. By not revealing identifiable media, I inadvertently released information that, to me, was showcasing the kind of entitlement I was exhausted of, but the evidence I provided was weak enough to garner warranted critiques. I also tried to dissuade the people that were showing their support for me by attacking this group, but in the end, they made their own decisions, and I am not responsible for the actions of others. What was frustrating about this though was that the group of people that were trying to defame me were using supporters' words in place of the silence I had left. First and foremost, I do not want to defame or undermine people's efforts that they've achieved in the Kingdom Hearts community. However, just because an individual has made a name for themselves does not entitle them to any automatic inclusion or ownership of any project in that community. The shared trauma that Critic and I experienced through these events fostered a real friendship that I'm extremely appreciative of, and I would not want to change what happened despite how damaging it was to my family and my own personal well-being, which we'll discuss now. Around this time, I was terminated from my professional position in the US as a software developer, and the reason I was given was in relation to my online presence during the Melody of Memory and the Kingdom Hearts 3 randomizer period. 
I do take responsibility though for my company being aware of my online presence due to my online portfolio being used on my resume. Although, had I known the toxicity that existed within this lighthearted, child-friendly Disney and Final Fantasy game, I would have left the contributions I made to this community off of my professional resume. I was also required to use a personal account for any contributions I made for this company since they were trying to minimize money spent on enterprise software and services. In retrospect, I should have used an alternate account rather than the one I used for my Kingdom Hearts community contributions, but the thought did not cross my mind that people would go on to defame me and draw the eyes of my employers. The company I worked for at the time was then able to use this information to monitor my online presence without my knowledge. When I was terminated, it was a big shock, especially after hearing that my online presence was part of their decision to justify my termination. I was fortunate enough to eventually secure a new position in the same field in New Zealand, which ended up being easier on myself and my family. However, on my first day at my new job, I was also targeted with defamatory statements publicly on Twitter in relation to my work on the Kingdom Hearts 3 randomizer, literally as I was training and reading through their policies. I didn't realize this was happening until after I came home from work that night, and unfortunately my new position has an even stricter online presence policy. Having my name and reputation being targeted once again obviously caused me a lot of stress, as their actions had already had an effect on my ability to provide for myself and my family. Even though what was said about me online was baseless and the result of community members' egos being hurt, I still paid the price for their actions. Some of the members of this group responsible for the Twitter drama apologized to me privately, stating that they were going through difficult times. However, this was yet another example of how I was expected to sit back and tolerate others' emotional turmoil with zero leeway to calmly and fairly express my own concerns. This caused me an overwhelming amount of mental and emotional stress given how I had just lost my previous job because of online situations like this. I felt unable to respond to any defamatory statements and just simply resigned to remove any connection of my online presence from my professional experience. For anyone not aware though, industries these days expect a minimum of 3-5 to five years of experience when applying for software development. I'm fortunate that at this point in my professional career, I can rely on my commercial experience to support myself on my resume, but those that are delving into modding or developing tools for communities that rely on this experience to gain footing in professional environments don't have the luxury of disconnecting from all of the work they've done in that community. But again, even though these were really difficult moments in my life, they helped create a unique bond between me and my stepdaughter. I remember spending weeks worrying about if I was going to lose my previous job or questioning my decisions to put so much time and effort into rechart in the cage through randomizer. During those several weeks, my stepdaughter had noticed how visibly affected I was. I remember one night I had fallen asleep at my laptop and I woke up to her sliding me a, a drawing of an otter which is my favorite animal with a sweet little note as a late birthday gift. It's a... <clears throat> wow, okay. <laughs> It's a very charged memory, one surrounded with a lot of sadness and anxiety, but that joy and kindness she shared with me in that moment turned <sighs> turned that into a happy memory I cherish of her. I'm going to briefly touch on the Wayfinder project, which was probably one of my favorite projects to work on. I was so excited by the utility it could provide the Kingdom Hearts community by having an easily indexable searchable database filled with information of the in-game universe. I was honored to work with Erkther Pat on this and expand ever so slightly his vision for this project. The issue started to arise when a couple members online made passive disparaging comments towards our work and process. At this point I had publicly announced that this would be my final project. This was the final straw for me. Even though it wasn't as large of a scale as the previous projects I had worked on, it was still sensitive and painful to experience people that were upset that we were creating accessible information to a broad audience of people. It just circles back to my original experience with Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, where I was treated as being at fault for entering a domain that someone else had already self-proclaimed as their own. But nobody is entitled to claim these spaces as their own, unless they are the creator, which in this case is Square Enix. Also, while I'm on this topic, I wanted to draw attention to the usage of GitHub in this project. This not only allowed me to keep track of all the outstanding issues with the flow, the features, and bug reports coming in, but it also gave visibility to people that were making these reports as well as allowing everyone to contribute in a meaningful way. The 
The culmination of all these experiences snapped my resolve to create these projects that I thought would bring a lot of fun experiences and useful information to the Kingdom Hearts community. No matter how much hard work and the thousands of hours I put into all these projects, I was still receiving belittling and gatekeeping comments simply because these people felt entitled for absolutely no reason. It ranged from followers to influencers that were defaming and damaging my reputation to such a wide audience. I'm simply giving a recounting of my experiences and the actions and behaviors that were directed at me. I don't care about this person or that person, which is why I removed their names. I'm focused on their actions, and I hope I accurately depicted that in this video. All of these experiences finally broke me. I was being gaslit so much by the community that I did end up blaming myself. I blamed myself for being taken advantage of, I blamed myself for not pleasing everyone, I blamed myself for not being quick enough, I blamed myself for not being able to resolve every bug. I really had ingrained in my heart that I was in the wrong, even when my brain, my friends, and people in the community were telling me otherwise. It all came to a point during development for the Kingdom Hearts 3 randomizer where I just couldn't take it anymore, and I'm not apologizing for that. As someone that was providing free services for people who were only looking to better themselves through popularity, content, or peering at GDQ, I was being harassed for decisions I had every right to make, like not including people in my projects even though they felt entitled to be included. I had to constantly tell myself this until I truly believed in myself, but there's one fact I learned through all of this. Anything I create is mine, not the community's. I love sharing my projects and work for people to use and iterate on, but there's a limit where it all becomes too much and my mental well-being and my life is better off without it. It's, it's hard to really communicate this to people, but I don't like being in the spotlight. I like helping people, whether that's creating custom tools for presenting information or making fun experiences that they can enjoy with others. But when people start misattributing others for my work or other people start stealing and taking credit for things I did, or when people become demanding of my time and energy, that's when passion projects become headaches instead. I wanted to mention that there are a couple more things that I wanted to touch on in regards to my experiences in certain caged communities, but I felt like they didn't have enough evidence to base my claims off of. Things like people using information from my open source libraries without crediting me, like very specific things that people have been complaining about in other big projects that seem to be magically fixed after I made my code changes public. I wasn't able to find any open source code of theirs to verify this is what happened, so I opted not to use it in my recounting. There were also situations and repetitive experiences I decided to remove since the idea was to highlight the actions and not the people doing said actions. Once I discussed one situation where these actions took place, I felt like I didn't need to spend more time discussing the same action performed by different people. I also wanted to take this moment to address several actions of members in this community that were spreading rumors that I never complete projects. I take a lot of pride in the work I do, so for people to insinuate that I don't do my best in something was honestly a real shock. For one thing, why does this matter? Especially when I'm doing all this for free and all my code is publicly available to modify and update. All the code I've written for these projects is open source, and some people in the community also don't seem to know what that definition is. This essentially means that if you are unhappy with the state I left the project in, you're welcome to modify that logic and push updates to the main project. I was working on these projects on top of streaming on Twitch and making YouTube content, which tapered off since I've moved to New Zealand, having a family with my beautiful partner and loving stepdaughter, and working in my professional field of software engineering. Which if you work in that field, it's not really a normal 9 to 5. In saying all of this, I'm not trying to bolster myself or boost my ego, I'm simply saying that the work I did in the Kingdom Hearts community was a hobby. I did approach my projects like a full-time position, and I was very proud of the work I did. But at the end of the day, no one was paying me. No one had the right to be holding my products to AAA standards, and no one had the right to treat me the way that they did. And I know I hammer on about it above in my introduction, but it really is entitlement to a toxic, unhealthy degree that fueled all of the actions discussed. I also want to touch on a common thread. Most of the people that agreed to talk with me to work things out peacefully and privately mentioned a common reason for their actions, that they were experiencing a lot of stress in their personal life. I can understand this but this does not excuse them to then exert the stress on me, especially since I was not friends with these people in the first place. It seems more like emotional manipulation to make me consider their actions justified in some way. I realize that because I am this faceless green flame online that I dehumanize myself, but I am a person and I should be treated with the same respect as any other person should be. I did not deserve the actions that were aimed at me and I'm standing up for myself and for others that have been treated similarly. 
In that same vein, I am also not perfect. I know I've been highlighting everyone else's actions, but to call attention to one that I did, I called out someone during the development of the randomizer for requesting that we not at everyone in the server. I did apologize to them, but it wasn't appropriate of me to call them out in front of everyone. It was really hard for me to be present online after everything. Not only did I have my character and reputation dragged through the mud, I also felt like all my hard work and effort going into all of these projects were met with contention and entitlement in every direction. For a while I couldn't enter a Twitch chat of any speed or challenge runner without being harassed or called out because of what they heard about me. I ended my contribution and affiliation with events in the community because there were people that would call for boycotts due to my presence. My connections with the members of the community started to become strained and I could feel myself becoming disconnected from everyone that I had been so close to. I didn't want to hurt people's online reputations just because they were associating themselves with me, so I slowly withdrew myself from their communities. Stepping back and really reflecting on these events and my own personal actions helped me gain perspective though. I was not in the wrong. I was exploring a hobby of mine and using the knowledge and abilities I had to create experiences for people to enjoy. If people are upset that I'm being recognized for this, or if they're trying to damage my reputation because I'm not including them, I'm fine with that. I used my talents to give my friends tools and new ways to play games that we all loved, and that's what I always wanted to do. Finally, I was fortunate to be surrounded by many people that believed in me and showed me love and support during these times, specifically to my fiance, Preferred Whale 6. There were also so many people that gave me strength and courage to make this video, and to you, I thank you as well. The main reason I am releasing this is to give other people strength and comfort in knowing they are not alone in being treated this way, whether they are in the Kingdom Hearts community or in a different community altogether. If you've been subjected to harassment or pushed out of a community without the ability to be heard, please tell your story or reach out to your friends or people in your community so that you can receive the support you need and spread awareness. Please don't allow this kind of toxic entitlement to be normalized in your communities. You do not owe anyone anything for creations or experiences that you develop and share. No one is entitled to your work other than you. Thank you for giving me your time and your attention.